Uh, what a life. I know, that was a silly intro, but it's an example of what can be done with the mouth that we created in part 2, creating a switch layer. In this tutorial, I'll show how to use the mouth switch layer and sync it to audio. Let's get started. First, I've saved my mouth project so it is now an anime studio object and can be imported into several different projects as it's needed. This way you can create several different mouths and put them in your own library without having to start from scratch each time you need one quickly. Also, I should already have some nice clean audio with only speaking on it saved somewhere for this project. Because I will be using the autosync method, I don't want extra sounds messing up the lip sync and confusing the software. Now, this doesn't matter so much if we're syncing the mouth to audio manually, but for this tutorial, I'll be using the autosync method and I'll explain the difference a little bit later. Let's start a new project. I've already drawn a really simple face for an example to show that you can import the mouth to any face that you would like or an object even. Okay, so let's go get our mouth. I'm going into the file menu, import, and scrolling down to anime studio object. I'm going to go find the mouth. It's in there somewhere. I'm going to use this one. Okay, there it is. As you can see, it doesn't fit very well. So, making sure that the mouth layer is highlighted here on the right, go to the left side of the page where it says layer and click on scale by dragging the points, make it smaller, and then go back over to the layer, section over to the left there, and click on translate layer and drag it down. And there we go. That's pretty much it for that part. And you see we have, when we imported our mouth, it has all of those layers inside of it. Okay, so we have our mouth placed. We need to get our audio. So we go to the file menu and we're going to import some audio. Scroll all the way down to audio file and locate your audio. This one's a little bit easier to find. I'm using a piece that I recorded for some voiceover practice. Okay, here's my audio, audio file. It's now a layer. Now this is something you can do, but you don't have to do. You can double click your audio layer. Go to the audio tab. In this box, you can type out all of the things that are in your audio. It's supposed to help the lip syncing be more accurate. Although I have found not much a difference if I don't type it, and if I do, you, you have to do a little bit of tweaking either way. So I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to fill it in this time. The next thing we need to do is to link up our mouth with our audio. And the way to do that is double click your mouth switch layer, then go to the switch tab, select your audio sync source, and there it is. Now watch down here at the bottom when I click OK. All these little dots show up. That represents each time the mouth changes poses. So when I drag this red line, you see the mouth moving. Nuclear power is an emotive subject, particularly in the wake of the Fukushima power. Okay, it seems to be working, but as you'll notice, 
sometimes, many times, the autosync method isn't exactly precise, but that's okay because we can tweak it. It's a little bit tedious, but I think this method is, using the autosync method is a little bit faster than manually syncing. When you're syncing manually, you have to move the red line across the timeline until you hear a sound. And then you have to figure out which sound is being made. When you figure out which sound is being made, you go over to your switch layer. You right click it and choose whichever layer fits the sound the best. After you do that, a dot will show up on the timeline referencing where this change has happened. Then you keep going, moving across the timeline, and you change the mouth pose as you go. And it takes a while, but is probably more accurate. You can also have different mouth poses that you wouldn't have in this type of auto syncing switch layer that I have here. So actually, manual syncing has its place. Sometimes you want the mouth to do the extra poses that you can't find and you just have more options that way. We're going to have to edit our lip sync a bit. So we're going to move the red line across the timeline and check to see that the mouth is in the proper pose for the sound that's played at the time. If it isn't, we can fix it in several ways. First of all, I can see at this point the mouth should be saying an N sound. But the pose looks like it's the FV sound. So I'm going to click on the dot just to highlight it and it helps me know where it is. And I'm putting the line right on top of that dot. Then I'm going to go to the mouth switch layer. I'm right clicking it and choosing the layer that best matches whatever sound that is. And I'm thinking maybe the L because the tongue touches the top teeth whenever you say the N sound. As you can see, this is the reason why manually lip syncing might might be preferable if you you really want to make it look a, far more accurate. So let's just say the mouth pose is correct, but the movement is showing up in slightly the wrong spot. You can slide it to where it needs to go. Also, if the mouth pose didn't change where it was supposed to, you can slide the red line to the spot where the change should happen. Then right click the switch layer, choose the sound, and a dot will appear on the timeline. If you notice there's a movement that doesn't belong there at all, you can just delete it by highlighting the dot and click delete. If you want to delete several changes or several dots, all at once, just drag a selection box around them and then poof, you can delete it. Or if you'd rather just do the manual lip syncing, go to the switch layer icon and it highlights all the dots, then delete. Also, you'll notice that the switch layer that we're doing for the mouth is the same for any other thing like eyes or eyebrows. It's the same idea. You will be manually switching those. But to do that, to make the movement, you slide the red, the red line across the timeline and you go to your switch layer and right click it and choose whichever image that you want to happen at that part in the timeline. So basically that's how you animate with a switch layer. So save this project, save it as whatever you want and it will be an anime studio project. And you can use it for any other project, or you can go ahead and just export it as a movie. To do that, choose Export Animation from the File menu, then select Output Format, and then pick the type of the movie you want from the drop-down. Usually I use the QuickTime Movie. I have pretty good success with that. It renders much more quickly, and it looks the way I would expect it to. And of course, there's lots more details regarding the quality. But I think I'll save that for a different tutorial. Nuclear power is an emotive subject, particularly in the wake of the Fukushima power plant disaster after Japan's March. Okay, I hope this helps answer. you to understand the way switch layers work in Anime Studio Pro 6. Thank you so much for watching, and please feel free to leave a comment, hit the like button, or subscribe. If you have any questions, just ask me, and I'm not a professional, but I'll try to help as best I can. Okay, now get to animating. Bye!